Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, it's Johnny5. I'm gonna start doing videos on this new project that I'm working on. I have a Toyota 1972 Toyota Hilux that I am actually putting a Tesla small drive into. I'm gonna start with doing a Dadeon axle, which is a... Uh, this thing is kind of big, it's kind of bulky and chunky, but I really don't care because this truck's gonna be more of a like a workable uh, truck as opposed to like a show thing. I want to be able to like throw stuff in the bed and just use it. I've already uh, last weekend started the project by pulling the engine out, the old gas engine, pulled the transmission, pulled the fuel cell, and all the all the gas uh, powertrain components. And now I'm starting on doing the electric part. And last weekend I put the battery pack in it. It's going to be powered by an i3, uh, BMW i3 battery. Uh, I'm using the whole thing. It's 96S, so 96 uh, cells in series. Uh, that gives me the 355 volts that I need um, to run the Tesla motor. So it's kind of a perfect match. And then I'm going to have a Dadeon axle. And the Dadeon axle is basically uh, it's what referred to as a dead axle. It's basically like having a straight axle with leaf springs and all that stuff. Um, but then it has uh, independent style axles going to it with a, with a hub, with a micro stub hub that I'm going to be using. And actually, this is, this is actually off of Model 3. Um, this is a Model 3 micro stub hub, and it's very similar to a Chevy micro stub, which you'll see on a lot of off-road cars. So that's kind of cool. And then this is a stock Tesla axle uh, that I'll be using off of Model 3, which works with this hub and everything. And luckily enough, this end actually goes into the Model S motor. It's the same spline, same shaft, and all this, uh, all this is the same. The only thing different is this end is uh, smaller on the Model 3, and this is where the seal is riding. So all I have to do is change the seal on the Model S motor to a Model 3 seal, and those will work. So that's the that's the start of it. I'm going to start building this Dadeon axle and uh, get it under the truck as soon as I can, uh, because once I do that, I'll be able to get the motor placed and uh, and get it mounted up in there, and the try to get through all the fabrication as quickly as I can. So, all right, let's get to it. So if you're watching me uh, shove this block of mystery brick into the bandsaw uh, basically this is candle wax just straight up candle wax uh, that I put into the blade and it keeps keeps a blade from packing up with shavings and uh, eventually getting so full that the blade doesn't do anything at all so that's all I'm doing is using this as a lubricant and uh, a wax always, is always going to work better uh, in this case because if I'd use WD-40 or something uh, it'll start slipping on the pulleys in here and uh, and that's that doesn't help or work at all. So uh, the wax doesn't allow it to do that, um, but acts like a lubricant once it's uh, in the blades. So, all right, back at it. So I got uh, I just cut these in a bandsaw. And these are the two ends that are on the end of the Dadeon. And basically, um, I've got to take this plate right here and cut it in half. And then take them both and uh, chuck them up in my lathe and uh, cut centrics into them. Um, so that basically this part of the hub uh, tightly slides into that centric on the plate there. and. Uh, and I can bolt it on, uh, drill some holes and bolt it on. Basically that plate's going to get welded to the ends of these. And then I'll be able to bolt up my hub to the uh, to these tubes. And so these two tubes sit about 
uh, well, I don't know, roughly, roughly like that, something like that. Um, basically, this is now my straight axle. So I'll have this piece of three inch box tube come out, go across here and come back in. And uh, that is going to be my Dadeone or my dead axle. Um, and I went with box tubing mainly for a couple reasons. One, um, I, I didn't really care about how it looked too much. Uh, because it's under the truck and it's, again, supposed to be something that's robust, so um, I just went with box tubing. Um, and because it's easy to deal with as far as uh, this part, my leaf spring is going to be attached to right here. So there, I'll be drilling four bolts, or four holes here for bolts, and a locator bowl for the uh, pin on the leaf, the leaf pack. And so basically that makes that really easy because I don't have to deal with having a round tube and then having to attach something to attach the uh, axle to the leaf springs. So, and then another thing, another thing I did on this is uh, I made sure that when I cut these, there is, this is a piece of cold rolled. Uh, it came from a, you know, big 20 foot stick of uh, six by six by quarter inch wall. Cold, cold rolled and basically what they do is they fold this around a die and they they weld it right here and I wanted to be sure that um, when I do this that I had both these welds on the side that is welded to the beam here and basically I did that because uh, it helps strengthen this too because this is the weakest part of this this whole uh, structure here so I wanted to make sure that when I weld or I built, put this all together that my other tube that's coming into here is capturing all of this that way it helps hold that together um, and so that'll, that'll keep that all pretty strong so uh, yeah the next thing I'm going to be doing is taking this piece of plate cutting the centrics in it cutting in half and then uh, I could weld that to here and then after I weld that to there, do the 3x3 three three beam, and then should be good to go. All right. All right, so I'm at the point where I'm going to machine these out for the hub uh, right here. So basically, what I did was cut the plate out um, to where it fits inside of this. Now I'm going to go stick this on my lathe and... Uh, use my flat plate on my lathe, which basically is a big flat plate that has uh, different slots in it so I can uh, clamp this to the, to the plate. And I'll use my uh, live center to center it on the lathe and then clamp it down in the corners. And basically, I have to cut the hole for this centric right here that's on the hub. Uh, this is a really tight tolerance, so not quite press fit, but pretty snug in there. Uh, so I'll machine both of these plates to that. And then once I have that, I'll uh, drill the holes on the plate and uh, I'll basically basically be done because it, it bolts through the backside to the hub. So I'll be good there. Um, and it's kind of cool because I, I, uh, the way that I figured this out is I use my calipers and I found center and then basically I use this this guy right here which is a, a spring-loaded center punch which is really neat you push it in and it pops and it basically puts a little indent in there for you so uh, pretty cool tool anyway I'm gonna go machine this up So I have these two pieces that I got uh, done last night. I welded up the, these plates onto these blocks here. Basically now I have it, uh, these two squared up to this uh, piece of aluminum, uh, extruded aluminum channel. And I have it clamped here and here that basically keeps it 
nice and square. And then I took a tape measure and I went from here to the edge of my mill table and uh, got that perfectly square. So, uh, and then last but not least, I clamped it down here. Basically it keeps it square as far as that plane goes. So I have it perfectly square in uh, three different dimensions. And so now that I have my width perfect, I'll be able to make this tube that goes across here, tack it in and uh, basically uh, weld it in on here because I'm treating my mill table as my fixture since it's nice and flat and uh, square. So um, yeah, let's put that barn. So that about wraps it up for this uh, first episode of this. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, I will be putting in the main battery pack and mounting the Tesla motor into the actual truck. So stay tuned for that. Till then, thanks for watching. Bye.